Hello and welcome to this short mini tutorial on the basic differences between CT and the different types of MRI scans. So what we've got here are three images of three different imaging modalities of the brain and we're all looking at a similar level through the brain in the transverse plane. Here we've got a CT image and the middle one is a T1 weighted MRI scan and the right hand one is a T2 weighted MRI scan. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the very basic features of these scans. Um, and I'm going to guide you through you know, the basic ideas of interpreting them. So first of all, let's look at the CT scan on the left hand side. Um, as you can see, um, in comparison with the MRI scans, CT scans are relatively low resolution. So we really don't get a huge amount of anatomical detail when we're looking at the uh, say the deep structures of the brain or even the details of the gyri and sulci of the cerebral cortex. However, what CT is very good at is showing us bony anatomy. So we can see here the bone of the skull in the CT scan is very well demonstrated uh, and that's why CT is a good modality if you're looking for skull fractures. What else can we see on CT? Well, we can see that bone, the densest material, is pure white. We can see that CSF in the ventricular system uh, appears as black. And brain appears as something in between. Okay? So the densest structures on, on a CT is bone. The least dense structure um, is anything containing CSF. And brain appears as something in between. Now, if you look very, very carefully, you can actually differentiate um, white from grey matter, although it's not nowhere near as easy as in the MRI scans. So if you look in this area here, for example, this is part of the corpus callosum, and we can see that this white matter is appearing as very slightly, a very slightly dark area, and we can see the grey matter of the cortex just on the outside appearing as ever so slightly less dense than the deeper white matter. Furthermore, you can see some very vague details of the deep cerebral nuclei, although um, that's not really shown up anywhere near as much detail as in the MRIs. The final feature to look at on this scan are two little white patches here and here, and these are little bits of calcified choroid plexus in the lateral ventricles. Now, why would you do a CT scan? Well, typically we like to do CT scans um, because we can do them very quickly and we can get a result very rapidly. Um, so if we're trying to, say, exclude um, an intracerebral or intracranial hemorrhage, um, we'd very rapid, be, rapidly be able to diagnose that on a CT. MRI takes that little bit longer. Another advantage of the CT, as you know, um, is that you if, you, if you're claustrophobic, a CT scan isn't a big deal. If, if you are claustrophobic, an MRI scan is a big deal because you're in a tunnel and, and it gets very, very noisy. So that's the basic features of CTs. Now let's look at MRI scans. And I've given you two examples of two different protocols that you can run the MRI machine in. The first one is, is a T1 protocol and the second one we're going to look at is a T2 protocol. So let's consider um, the T2 MRI first, actually. The reason we're considering the T2 MRI first is because it highlights a very specific type of substance within the brain, and that is water. Okay? And if you struggle to remember um, the difference between a T2 and a T1 MRI, what you need to remember is that T2 has a 2 in it, just like H2O, okay? So T2 MRI is looking at H2O. And H2O water gives us a strong, bright, white signal on T2 MRI. And you can see this on the image. So here is the ventricular system beautifully outlined in this T2 MRI image, as well as CSF going in through all of the sulci between the different gyri. So this T2 MRI really shows us exquisite detail by showing us where CSF can be found. And we can even see it as a thin film in the subarachnoid space all the way around the brain.
So that's the main advantage of a T2 MRI over a T1-based MRI. If you look in the T1-based MRI, the CSF-filled spaces appear very similar to how they appear on the CT scan. That is black with low signal. Now, the other obvious advantage of MRI, whether it's T1 or T2, over CT is the much greater detail that we get in the MRI scans compared to in the CT scans. So you can see in the MRI scans, and we'll focus on this T2 weighted image, you can even see the detail between the different components of the basal ganglia here. And you can see beautiful fine detail in the occipital lobe and also the white matter connecting the two frontal lobes. So we've got a lot of detail in these MRI scans you are struggling to see this amount of detail on the relatively grainy CT scans, which can be performed much faster than an MRI. This increased sensitivity of MRI also helps us uh, in the early diagnosis of lesions such as strokes. Um, an early ischemic stroke, where there is no bleeding, would not show up very clearly at all on a CT scan. However, you would see it very obviously if you conducted an MRI on that same person. So that's all I'm going to say about CTs and MRIs at this stage. Um, you'll encounter more of these as the unit progresses. Okay, thanks.